that video. Third question of the day. This is the deeper move. What is death? Death is just a physical death? So if we're two things, souls and bodies, suppose you're a dualist. Does the soul die too when the body dies? Because it just sees the uh, one as far as the other. Okay, good. That is a, a, um, a strong, legitimate philosophical view, is that one requires the other. Suppose you're a dualist. You think we are two things, but you also think that in order for the soul to have existence, it must be dependent for its sustenance upon a physical vessel in which it is housed. If that physical vessel dies, then the soul perishes as well. Okay, remember in the dialogue, um, I don't have time to get into it, but remember in the dialogue when they're talking about um, the uh, soul as like a melody or like a, a, a song coming from the harp and the lyre, and if the, uh, the harp gets destroyed, then the melody does too, maybe. Okay? They're trying to equate it to some, some different uh, metaphors there. Um, Socrates thinks that death is an event where the soul and the body separate. So he thinks that his soul is immortal. And he thinks he's got arguments for why the soul can outlive the end of the body, the demise of the body. So what he thinks happens at death is the soul and the body separate from each other. And the soul lives on. And uh, Socrates thinks that um, the soul will go to the realm of the forms. Okay, it's kind of a Socratic conception of heaven. Uh, or a Greek conception of heaven. The soul will go to the realm of the forms where the soul will have direct contact with the forms. Okay. Direct contact with the forms. Mm -hmm. Remember the forms from the Zoom call? You guys remember the forms? What are the forms? Oh. oh no. Yeah, you said something about like, everything has a form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's got a form. Somebody help us out. What are the forms? Uh, not quite. It's sort of like heavenly beings, but not quite. The forms are like souls. They're concepts. They're concepts. Yeah, a form is a concept. Okay. And uh, for Plato, there are forms of everything. Concepts are categories that everything participates in. Okay, so um, there is a form of dogginess. There are individual dogs, each of whom participates in the form of dogginess. Okay, there's a form of tree. And individual trees participate in the form of tree. Do you guys kind of remember the discussion now? Yes. What's the form of a human being? Remember this from the discussion? Okay, so um, maybe this will help jog your memories. Um, okay, so Tom Brady is going for his... Oh, yeah. <laughs> he got ripped apart. Oh, tenth, yeah, he, he's, he's going for his 10th Super Bowl. He if he loses his arm, if he loses his legs... Both his arms, is he still Tom Brady? Yes, he is. But he cannot lose his mind, his conscious self. At that point, he ceases to be Tom Brady, at least according to Plato. What makes him Tom Brady is his conscious self. The soul is the form of a human being. That's what that was meant to illustrate. Okay? All right. At death, the soul and the body separate, according to Plato. So Plato thinks using Socrates as his mouthpiece, Plato thinks that um, the afterlife is a real thing, but that it's not a physical thing. It is a state of existence where the soul has direct contact with the forms. Okay, um, I think we have substantial scriptural evidence that the afterlife is actually an embodied existence. I know that this is, like, nobody really knows what the afterlife is going to be like, and different Christians have speculated through the centuries what the afterlife is going to be like, right? Nobody knows. 
most theologians would agree, not all, but most would agree that the scriptural evidence suggests that actually we do have bodies after life in here on earth. It's just heavenly bodies, perfected bodies. But nobody knows. This is all, all really speculative. Okay. Um, the question, the big question that is at stake in this dialogue is does the soul live on after the death of the body? Does the soul live on after the death of the body? Socrates thinks so. I think so too. Socrates offers arguments for why it does. I'm unconvinced by his arguments. I agree with his conclusion, but I find the arguments in the Phaedo to be unconvincing. I believe my soul will continue to be after the death of my body because I am told that it will continue to be after the death of my body by the Christian scriptures. Not because of any evidence from the natural world. Okay, that's just my own view. That's my own view. But Socrates in this dialogue offers arguments for the immortality of the soul. Okay, let's look at a couple of these arguments. You guys think he'll win his 10th Super Bowl? Oh, I'm sorry, his 7th Super Bowl? 10th, 10th one he's doing? I don't know. I wouldn't bet against him. He's a geezer now. He's like, how old is he? 23. 23? Hey, there's still hope for me. Okay, um. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be him. He's uh, He's got a lot of personal problems. Okay, um. Okay, uh. I'm losing my train. <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought. I don't like him. No, I don't like him. He's a cheater, and he's also a cheater on his wife too. So, okay, moving on. All right. Um. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the the first argument: cheater on the field, cheater off the field. Let's talk about the first argument for the immortality of the soul. Okay, the recycling argument. He's an extraordinary athlete, though, I should say, in his defense. Like, he's by far the best quarterback, I think. Like, Peyton Manning, maybe, Joe Montana, maybe, but Tom Brady is, is uh, the best of the best. Okay, so I, I needed to say that in his defense. Okay, recycling argument. Um, this is the argument that they're talking about when uh, they're discussing hot coming from cold and waking from sleeping, okay, and night from day and day from night and things like that, okay? Okay. Um, the argument is as follows. I'm just going to talk it for a minute. When we look around us in the world, it quickly becomes evident that things have lifespans. They come to be, they exist for a time, and then they cease to be. Okay, this building that we are in right now has a lifespan. Right now it is a building. There will be a time in the future when it is a pile of rubble. Okay, at that time, it will have ceased to be a building. However, it will not have ceased to be entirely. That pile of rubble will be transformed into something else, something different, something otherwise than what it once was as a building. Okay, uh, to vary the illustration, um, so some of us are commuters, you guys came to the school in your car. Uh, your car will one day cease to be a car. It'll just be a bunch of parts, car parts. Okay, that's always a sad day for me because I name my cars and have relationships with them. Um, my car's name, my uh, most recent car's name was Marla. She uh, she is now being disassembled. It's kind of sad. Um, I have a friend whose car's name is Lazarus. <laughs> you can imagine what that car's like. Okay. Um, all right, so because all the things we see around us that have lifespans don't just cease to be when they end this particular existence that they have, they just become transformed into something else. Socrates reasons, well, maybe that's the case with the soul also. In other words, maybe the soul just 
is transformed into something else upon death. It doesn't cease to be because we don't have evidence that anything ceases to be. It just gets transformed. Okay, um, I don't find this argument convincing. I think what Plato is doing is making a category mistake here. So, uh, Plato is a dualist, I mentioned. He thinks we are souls and bodies. And I think what he is doing is he is taking the characteristics of bodies and assuming that they are characteristics of souls as well. He is, in other words, is taking the characteristics of physical things, in other words, you know, things that do not just cease to be, they just become some other physical thing, he is applying this to a different kind of a substance, a soul, and he's assuming that that application across substances is efficacious, and I think that that's a bit opportunistic. I don't think you can assume that the characteristics of bodies are the same as the characteristics of souls. Okay, so I don't buy the recycling argument. Does everyone kind of understand the argument? Yes, I hear Well, I believe my soul is immortal. Yeah. Okay. I think your soul is immortal, too. I may be an annihilationist, though. I'm not sure. But go ahead. I'll tell you guys what that means in a minute. Uh, so, like, if our intelligence is immortal, then if the soul continues living, can it rejoin another body? Um... <laughs> I don't think we have any evidence of that. It certainly couldn't go into another body with any memory of what it once was. Yeah, because, I mean, presumably if that were the case, then people who are inhabiting bodies right now, some of them at least, would remember previous existences, but nobody does. So Socrates does think that the soul succeeds the death of the body, but he does not necessarily think that it will go into another body. But he also thinks they wipe their memory, right? Uh, yes, so the mind gets wiped when it enters a body. That is right. Well, but, it should, right? I mean, that's correct, yes. That's what he thinks, yes. He thinks that if you're good, then your, um, your mind can um, successfully escape the body and immediately commune with the forms directly. Yes, sorry. Yeah, but you can't remember anything from another life. Man, all you can remember is stuff from this life. That's all anybody can remember. Uh, conscious experiences. Right. Okay, so you're, uh, all right, well, I mean, I suppose it could be the case that our souls get wiped and we just don't have any memories of previous existence. I mean, maybe I was a, a, a cow in a previous existence. But, I mean, I don't think we have any empirical evidence of that. It, it would just be posited. I don't think we'd have any evidence that that's the case. Um, I was saying I may be an annihilationist. I'm not sure. Um, so if you think about it, um, it's kind of hard, morally speaking, to uh, imagine people suffering in hell eternally. Yeah. Like hell's like eternal hell is a long time, right? Yeah. Eternal hell is a long time, and uh, we have some evidence from the scriptures that um, we have abundant evidence that God is merciful, and some evidence also that uh, God might uh, bring about the end of conscious experience at a certain point for some. Mm -hmm. It does seem to be the merciful thing, doesn't it? But so like Hitler suffering forever? For killing all those people? Yeah. Like forever? Maybe God just ends him. Well, I, I know I get it. I totally get it. Like Hitler's not going to heaven. I don't think. I don't think that all, everybody gets saved. I'm not a universalist. I don't think Hitler's going to be in heaven. Or like you can assume that, right? 
No, we don't know. Nobody knows. Yeah, nobody knows. Uh, all you know is the state of your own soul. And. Uh, Okay, so God knows the state of my soul better than I do. That is true. But I kind of think I know my own soul, at least some aspects of it. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, annihilationism might be totally wrong. There is some scriptural evidence for it. Probably not as much scriptural evidence as there is for eternal suffering. Uh, annihilationism? Uh, at a certain point, God ends the ex existences of those who are in hell. They become annihilated Wait, out of mercy. He does it out of mercy. So they just end like this. So like that's the end, yeah. Is that biblical? Is that um, so like I said, there is some scriptural evidence for that, but not as much as there is for eternal suffering. So there is more scriptural evidence for eternal suffering than there is for annihilation. But no, 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 no. Jesus' sacrifice is necessary for people to be saved and be in heaven. You don't get an easy pass. You end. On annihilationism, you end. What's the point of being good? Of avoiding the end? Eternal paradise. I, I believe there will be an eternal paradise. Like that's like. That's cooler than being. I mean, yeah, like that's better than like not being. <laughs> oh well, that is the view. I'm not saying that view is correct. I'm saying that is a view that it has some attraction for me. I may be an annihilationist, but um, like I said, there's not as much scriptural evidence for that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I have to acknowledge that there's not as much evidence for that. So I don't know. So our soul. Okay. Our soul.